I'm going to show you how to set up and use the Jitsi uh, as a service um, plugin plus the JSON web token and how that works, how that is set up. We um, don't have a demo on the plugin itself because that would require us to input our API keys. So we're going to record this video to guide you through the whole process. So um, just to clarify the difference between um, the Jitsi free service, which just allows you to create video meetings. And this plugin is that this plugin is made for um, this site here, which is the paid version of Jitsi, which brings multiple advantages um, and also much higher more much higher security requirements, which is why we have to use these JSON web tokens. So um, quite different functionality. You will need an account uh, at, uh, on this um, platform here or create a dashboard there and there you will receive the API keys and um, secret keys and everything that you will need. And we're going to go through this in a second. So. Um, the plugin itself is quite simple. It just consists of two things. First of all, the Jitsi element and the JWT um, token generation action. So let's start off with the Jitsi element. All you have to do is drag that onto the page. This is where the actual video call will take place. So you can obviously um, record that um, or resize that accordingly and uh, use responsiveness settings and maybe apply maximum width. And all you have to enter here is your app ID. You, you will find your app ID once you signed up here for Jitsi in your dashboard. This will be um, a long, weird um, string and you can just enter that here and, and you should be set to go. And now all, uh, what you can do is you can basically start a new meeting uh, within an action. So there will be multiple options how you could do that. So under workflow, for example, you could say, all right, when the page is loaded, um, I want to element actions, I want to start a meeting, okay? Uh, you could obviously also add a button here, with, which is which says start meeting, which when pressed um, starts a meeting. So there's various different options that you have. Um, we're gonna stay here with the uh, when page is loaded. And now the element asks you for two things. First of all, the room name and the JSON web token. So for the room name, you will want to use a unique room name for this meeting. Um, and obviously if you want to have two people be in the same call, they will have to be in the same room. So what is advised um, is maybe to use something like a unique ID. That's what I always like to do. So for example, let's say you have a data type called video call in your bubble database and you create a new call data type every time a call is scheduled. Um, what I would recommend to do is just use the calls unique ID as a room name. So um, you'll always be sure that there's no duplicate room uh, rooms a room names given um, and always the real participants are taking part. So I'm just gonna uh, have the room name here as test. So I'm gonna keep it quite simple. And now for the JSON web token. So um, this is a bit more of the complicated part um, and we're gonna do this some, somewhere else. So let's just add a button here and we're gonna call this button um, generate JSON web token, okay? So what is a JSON web token? Well, JSON web token, especially in this uh, scenario, is a way of, um, is, is a token that shows Jitsi that the current user is authenticated and allowed to join the video meeting. And it consists of various different parts. First of all, um, a JSON web token is unique to an individual user, which means you have to create a JWT for all your, part for all participants. And obviously you will need to provide um, app specific information such as your app ID and, and secret key. But more about that in a second. I'm just going to click here on start editor workflow. And then let's have here under plugins. Um, let's have the plugin generate GWT. All right. And then it's going to ask you for all of these things and we're going to go through that. So keep in mind you want to generate a JSON web token for each participant. Okay. So what you could ideally do once the video call is scheduled, you trigger a backend workflow and then you create a GWT for the first participant and a JWT for the second participant. And you will have to provide um, um, Jitsi with a username. So you can just enter that here. So user one. So this will be displayed as well then in the, in the video call itself. You can provide a user email, but that's optional. Um, you can provide a avatar URL, otherwise we just provide a default um, image here. So if you provide an avatar URL, the actual avatar that you provide before will be shown in the video call, which is quite nice as the avatar of the user. So if, you have, if your users have avatars or uploaded profile pictures, you can use that. App ID um, is the same thing as before, the app ID of your um, Jitsi application, quite simple. 
Now the, the bit more complicated part. Once you're in your Jitsi dashboard, you will have to head over to your API uh, section, API key section, and you want to generate a new API key, okay? And you can generate one. And once it's generated, um, Jitsi will give you the option to get both the secret and the public key, and you can download them. But you can only download them once. Once you close the pop-up, then it's that's it. So make sure to uh, download both of these keys. And what you will then have to do is you can open the private key file with text editor or similar program and you want to enter that here, okay, under this field called private key. Um, the, the, private, the, the private key will have a structure similar to this. Let me just show you. It will have a st similar structure like this. So we'll, we'll start off with this with some um, lines and then we'll say begin, begin key, okay. Um, and then there will be more lines. And then the actual key will begin. That will be the structure. So let's just assume this here is our secret key. Some, it will look something like this. And then at the end, there will be this end of key. All right. What you want to do is you want to copy this as is. And you want to just add a single backslash um, and N to the end of the first text line here and to the beginning of the ending text line without any spaces, okay? The instructions are here written here again, but you wanna do that. And then all you have to do is copy this and paste that here. And that's it, okay? Um, yeah, I hope you could follow that. Um, there's a small mistake here. Um, it should be begin secret key, but just follow what I, uh, the instructions I just gave you and you should be good to go. The kit is just the API key ID for this API key. So it basically consists of your app ID plus, I think, four more letters. So if your app ID is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, let's just have A, B, C, then your kit will be something like A, B, C, slash, what? One, two, three. Okay, but you will find, so you have to obviously add the same or the, you have to add the ID for the API key for which you also use the private key. Here you can also define all other settings if you want to enable live streaming, recording, transcription, outbound calls, and so on. If you want to um, make the current user for this JWT a moderator, and for which room this should be applied. So if you want to apply this JWT for a specific room, so for example, for our room called test, well, then you have to specify that, and then this JWT wouldn't be valid for any other rooms. Or you ju just use that star, which would be a wildcard, which applies to all rooms, so the JWT uh, would be valid for all rooms. So yeah, I'm gonna jump into the um, actual application to see how that looks in practice. So here's my Jitsi element and I just changed this button to start a meeting. So this will now start a meeting for us. I, again, as mentioned, entered all the relevant information. So I'm gonna click here on start meeting now. And what will happen is um, I will be able to join this meeting with, this is the pre page, it allows me to put on, turn on my microphone and my camera, even select the background. Um, and this name here is passed via the JWT. Um, and um, I can always change that if I want to. And I, I can now go ahead and join the meeting. Um, there will be no one inside the meeting, so that doesn't make sense to join now. But um, yeah, as you can see, works quite nicely. And it's this size also because we apply the maximum width. And now the other user would have to join with the other JWT assigned to this participant. And you too could then um, have a video call or, or obviously more, more than two people. Um, so yeah, that was a quick uh, demo of this plugin. Um, hope you uh, find it easy to set it up and good luck um, with your video call application.